So for those of you who are unaware, blue check marks are meant to establish an account on Twitter as verifiably the individual that that account is meant to represent. But more and more often, blue check marks have been demonstrated to mean that those that have them are the, the, the kind of people, one, that Twitter kind of endorses in terms of ideology, but more importantly, the type of person that you definitely want to steer clear of. Believe it or not, they have a tendency to be certifiably bad people, or at least bad actors. Of course, I am being a little bit hyperbolic here. Not all blue check marks are bad, hashtag not all, but it does strike me as off that the blue check marks of Twitter are allowed to get away with nonsense like targeted harassment of individuals, threats, and the like. Prime example from this week is Brian Sims, one of those special cases of people that I reserve the utmost ire for on a day-to-day -day basis, and I've only known about the guy for the last week, give or take. He's in he is a self-described, according to his Twitter bio, LGBTQ activist, state representative, civil rights attorney, college football captain, bearded, hashtag RuPaul's Drag Race fanatic, and Little Mermaid enthusiast. It seems that he forgot to mention that he was also a massively throbbing hypocrite and serial harasser of women while he was describing himself. But we're getting to that. Brian Sims is a piece of work, let me tell you. And it's not because he so self-righteously protects Planned Parenthood on the grounds that he's protecting young women in their right to decide what it is that they do with their bodies in a very in-your-face type of way. No, no, no. That's not it. And it's certainly not in the way that he, a representative of the United States of America, or, well, Pennsylvania constituency, is such a, a, a hypocrite when it comes to shaming people for using their constitutional given right to protest things that they don't believe in. No, no, no. It's actually in the way that he goes about doing both of those things, by targeting and shaming on his platform of 52.4k strong followers, putting out a bounty for, for the names and information of random and what look to be minors on the streets who are who are just there to peacefully protest and pray uh, representative brian sims here and i am outside the planned parenthood at southeastern pennsylvania oh no they're leaving now what we've got here is a bunch of protesters a bunch of pseudo christian protesters who've been out here shaming young girls for being here Hi. and so here's the deal i've got a hundred dollars to anybody who will identify any of these three so we're going to donate to planned parenthood i'm going to donate to planned parenthood so look a bunch of war. white people standing out in front of a planned parenthood shaming I'm people really there's sorry. nothing christian about what you're doing I'm nothing christian at all about what you're doing Hi, nothing christian or loving or godly about what you're doing so i've got a hundred dollars to anybody who will identify a hundred dollars see if you got some friends out here hundred bucks. You, you, it, it'd be easier if you just give me your name and your address. Uh, um, rich, come on. Rich, speak. rich, where are you from? Uh, Lansdale. Rich, what makes you think that it's your job to tell women what's right for their bodies? And the truth is, I'm not really asking because I don't care. Shame on you. Guys, Planned Parenthood out here faces attacks daily from people like this. From from pseudo-Christians saying that they are, are here to somehow pr protect their, their own version of Christianity. Um, so do me a favor. If you've watched this, please consider giving $100 to Planned Parenthood. I'm going to do the same. Well, I'm glad that a Pennsylvania representative has taught me this day that it is okay for a grown man to walk up to a woman on the street, just any random woman, especially ones that are minors, with a camera or camera phone, and offer $100 to their entire Twitter base to have these young women be doxxed because they have what he thinks is a wrong stance on abortion. But this isn't a new thing, people. Remember Covington? That instance of silliness in the media earlier this year where a whole bunch of young teenage boys with MAGA hats on and a wrong opinion on abortion were demonized in the media and on Twitter by all manner of people because the narrative was that they had harassed a Native American. It came out later that that wasn't the case, but that didn't stop a whole bunch of blue checkmark types 
from going off the deep end. Reza Aslan, quote, Honest question, have you ever seen a more punchable face than this kid's? This tweet, by the way, still up on Twitter. Yeah, signed, sealed, and endorsed by Jack. And Twitter, as 100% completely fine. Even though this young man is a minor, and this grown man, with his following, is targeting this young man. And then there's Kathy Griffin, a serial silly person. Let's not kid ourselves. Quote, P.S. The reply from the school was pathetic and impotent. Name these kids. I want names. Shame them if you think these <laughs> wouldn't dox you in a heartbeat. Think again. An actual call for doxing. <laughs> this tweet is also still available on Twitter, believe it or not. Also, signed, sealed, and endorsed by Twitter and Jack. As of two days ago, 100% completely fine, according to them. And then there were, of course, uh, other tweets that were immediately taken down because people got enough backlash to recognize that they were in poor taste. John DiMaggio, quote, I've never in my life said, well, those are well-deserved death threats, but I've also learned to never say never. Hashtag f them punk white kids. And then, of course, the double down. Quote, I'm not saying death threats are okay, but you reap what you sow. That's my point. Punk kid knew exactly what they were doing. And I did see the video. Israelites, we deal with them in New York City on the street all the time. Shouting their shit, so what? Those kids, hashtag glass houses. But it's all interesting that while all of this is going down on the interwebs, it, it's, it's interesting that the AOC parody account was suspended just two days ago. Yeah. The AOC parody account was suspended. So the consensus I'm getting here from corporate social media, Twitter people, and Jack are that parody accounts are a no-no, but calls to harassment, violence, and doxing against children is a-okay. That's not the whole point I want to make. There's a little bit extra. This is not just a problem with blue checkmark types. Not even a little bit. If you thought that, then you were mistaken. Or you forgot about what happened in 2017. Remember when a Reddit user made a meme that CNN's K-File didn't like, so they tracked him down and ID'd him and attempted to contact him and then effectively intimidated him into making an apology on Reddit for his controversial Reddit usage under a pseudonym? Yeah. Intimidation of the everyday man by people who are excessively more powerful is not something new. And they tell us that we're not allowed to punch down. <laughs> it's funny, because we're supposed to be ashamed of it, but they're not ashamed of it anymore. You know, they should be ashamed of targeting children. Especially children. But in targeting the lower man on the totem pole, you're effectively silencing others, which I know is the goal probably, but it doesn't sit right with me. People should be allowed to have their opinions without being harassed about them in their personal lives, without the threat of people targeting them for their beliefs and finding them and threatening them harm and doxing them and all that jazz. Because the logical next step to doxing a person's personal information is obviously to do something bad to them. Because why else would you need to know where a person is and who a person is? Why else do you need to know names and faces of your ideological opponents if all that matters is their ideas. You know, it started with the media, and now it's migrated to government officials intimidating their constituents. And that's a scary thought, because that's like 12 levels away from that authoritarian level that no one wants to touch with a 10-foot pole. I think that Brian needs to resign his position as a Pennsylvania representative because this is just the type of person who doesn't belong in government with the power of the government backing his every whim. Especially if he can't control himself. Especially because he's not sorry about what it is he did. He doesn't see why this is unbecoming of a representative of the people. I've received a lot of feedback about a video I posted last week and I want to provide some background. You see, I've lived across the street or next door to this particular Planned Parenthood, one of the most heavily protested Planned Parenthoods in America for the last 15 years. I've seen men and women and teens try to go there for routine health care, for checkups, for pap smears, for breast exams, for STD screenings, and yes, for abortions. In fact, it's where I even treat for my own life-saving PrEP medication, and I'm grateful for the services that they provide. I've also spent the last seven years serving as a volunteer patient escort at this Planned Parenthood. And I have seen firsthand the insults, the slurs, the attacks, and the racism that those protesters aim at mostly young girls going there for clinical care. 
care that those of us on the outside can never understand, and last week was no different. What I should have shown you in that video was protesters gathered together to pray at, not to silently pray for, people coming in and out of Planned Parenthood as they intercepted them and harassed them. In my years with Planned Parenthood, I've seen women and girls circle that block two, three, four times before finally driving away because they know that they weren't gonna get in because of those protesters. But as a Planned Parenthood volunteer and as a supporter, I fully understand, respect, and appreciate the non-engagement policy that they have. And I would never wanna do anything that interfered with the care that they're providing to their patients. As an activist and an advocate, I know why pushing back against harassment and discrimination are a must, even when they're uncomfortable. But last week, I wasn't a patient escort. I was a neighbor and a concerned citizen, and I was aggressive. I know that two wrongs don't make a right, and I can do better, and I will do better for the women of Pennsylvania. He made an entire video not to apologize for his actions, but essentially to explain himself, to curb the ire of the people that he was feeling, because obviously, he felt it. He did it to virtue signal his position and to cast blame on the very individuals that he wanted to dox, as if his harassment of them was their own fault because they were committing wrong thing, according to him. I know that two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs don't make a right, he said. Bruh, could you be any more up your own ass, you self-righteous numbskull?